Welcome to our five on five. No, it's not deja vu. Michael Torgerson back with us. The rare back to back in the five on five. RCC political uh, science professor. Good to see you. Thanks Good so much for being here. So Donald Trump dominant win last night in the yes. Electoral College. Uh, yes. GOP also wins the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. Where do you think they will wield their power come January? The first thing they're going to do is Obamacare. Donald Trump's big signature are repeal and replace, build the wall, immigration reform, and Muslim registry, for lack of a better term. The repeal and replace is the low-hanging fruit because the congressional Republicans and a lot of the people who are seeing their rates exponentially increase are going to be all for it. Now, there are some good parts of the Affordable Care Act. Um, physicians being able to talk about end-of-life issues and get reimbursed for it, not being disqualified from insurance for pre-existing conditions. But then there are the, big, the, the mandate. You have to have insurance or else you're going to pay the tax penalty equal to your uh, premium. Hmm. And those are huge downers for the Republicans. That's the low-hanging fruit. The wall, not going to happen overnight, and it's probably going to evolve as it goes. Immigration reform, you're probably going to see little nibbles here and there, mm -hmm. but not a whole lot early on. Okay. What about the Supreme Court? Certainly we all know that that's something that, that mm -hmm. we've been talking about for more than a year now, mm -hmm. I'm sure. So uh, no guarantees there. You know, we've, we've seen nope. it before yeah. where, where Republican uh, presidents have yes. appointed justices they thought yeah. might, might overturn Roe yeah. versus Wade or, or at least tilt the court in the yeah. other direction. You've got Anthony Kennedy. You've got David Souter. Some say you would have Chief Justice Roberts is starting to move away from the right and more towards the middle. Um, I would recommend against Merrick Garland finding a new house because he's going <laughs> to stay on his circuit. Um, my guess is that on the 21st of January, Trump is going to pick one of the 20 off of his list and send that to the Senate and get that confirmed. Now you have Clarence Thomas, you have Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you have Anthony Kennedy. Those are the three eldest justices on the court, and they're mid-70s to low-80s. Mm -hmm. So they're getting a pretty long in the tooth, so he might get a couple more before the first term is done. Big change possible. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Much more in a moment. Stay with us. Torgerson uh, from RCC. You're talking, of course, politics. So where does Donald Trump and, and the Republican House, the Republican Senate, where do they figure out where they want to take this country? And at the same time, Democrats, uh, are they going to be pushing back? Do they have anything they could do to stop Republicans? Democrats will be pushing back, but their pushback is going to be mostly ineffectual. The biggest tool, the biggest weapon that the Democrats have is the filibuster in the Senate. But the Republicans now have the same power that the Democrats had in 2008 when Obama and House and Congress and the Senate mm -hmm. were held. What the Republicans need to do is they need to read their history books and they need to see that we can't be as aggressive, we can't be as ambitious, we can't push as hard as much as fast because in 2010 the Democrats got spanked at the electorate and the House changed 65 seats. Midterms favor Midterms. the minor party. If Midterms you favor yeah. the out of party candidates. Okay. So what Donald Trump and what the Republican Party is going to have to do, Speaker Ryan is going to have to get the Republicans in the House and, in, and McConnell in the Senate to come together. Reince Priebus is going to have to get the party and the president together. you are also got the Rubio, Cruz, Rand, Paul, Tea Party faction that are going to have to play nice with the McConnell and the Olympia Snow more moderate factions. So yeah, you, there's a lot of variety it's in, hurting in GOP cats. right now, and it's, it's been an interesting battle for years yes. now, and now they're in power. Now they're in power, <laughs> and you know it's like the dog chasing the car. Now that they've caught it, what are they going to do with it? Mm -hmm. And they've got to be real careful or else they're going to get hurt. They also have to convince the rest of the country that our ideas are good ideas. Our plan is a good plan. Everybody wants to get toward a more perfect union. The road that we get there is the difference between Democrats and Republicans. And in the Republican Party, it's the difference between the moderates and the Tea Party. Dennis Richardson, first uh, Republican to win, to win statewide office in, in Oregon since yeah, it's more than a decade. Big <laughs> <laughs> well done. So what does that mean for, for Oregon? What does that mean for, for Democrats and Republicans? Republicans, this is, this is one. One is one, two's a coincidence, three's a pattern. So this is one, first since 2002. 
he needs to, his biggest job is to follow his campaign promise to treat the office as nonpartisan as possible. He's going to be fair with ballot measures, ballot titles, ballot signature requirements. He's going to, he's got the law degree, he's got the financial background from his time in the, in the yeah, state house. And, means, yeah. and he is going to take a look and audit all of the state departments, find fraud, waste, and abuse, and really tighten down the screws. Certainly if, with 97 going down, the state needs to pinch yes, every penny it can. Yes, and if I were one of the uh, administrative bureaucrats in one of these places that has been flying pretty much under the radar, I'd start to be sweating right about now. Interesting. Good to see you as always. Thank you much. Thanks very much. Stay with us. We'll be right back.